Hi everyone, it's John Persinger, CEO of the Erie Downtown Development Corporation, and today is the day. The wait is over. Flagship City Food Hall is open, and we got people who want to come in. Don't let me hold you up. Come on in, come on in. We're just doing a little video. This is the community's dining room, so everybody is welcome. We're here to welcome you. Come on down. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What are you looking forward to? I've just seen everything. Awesome. Come on in. Let's go check out what the vendors are serving up. We got our VP of Finance and Development, Matt Walker, here, busy working on spreadsheets, making sure bills get paid. Absolutely. Enjoy the food hall. Let's go over and talk to Nicole Reitzel, our VP for Community Engagement and Social Impact. Uh, Nicole, on the on the serious note, could you share the reason behind the food hall concept? Well, I think that when we acquired these properties and we're trying to figure out what to do with them, one of the things we kept asking ourselves, and we even kept a uh, large post-it note on the wall asking the question of what brings people together, and what the thing we kept coming back to was food. So this was a great way, we thought, to bring everyone in the community together, um, no matter what background they're from, everyone can appreciate a good meal, uh, so this was really an important first project in order to be able to do that. Awesome, and so it's been a lot of work to get to this point. This building didn't always look like this. Any favorite memories from before the transformation? Um, favorite memories from before the transformation? Um, I guess I remember a member of our team who will go nameless, uh, sort of falling through the floor a little bit in one of our tours and just being glad that it was one of us and not a guest that we were bringing through. Um, but yes, there were many moments like that where um, it was a little bit scary. <laughs> Scary is a good word, haunting, intimidating, but we're here and so uh, we've got some new adjectives for this beautiful space. Let's go over and meet Crystal Robinson, who's the founder of uh, Taste and See, but we got, I think our experience director, Ryan Hoover, is ducking us here. Ryan, come here for a second. You can't duck the cameras. <laughs> Ryan, so um, everybody's walking through, we're showing people the food hall on the ground floor and our wonderful nine vendors. But why don't you tell everybody what's on the upper floor? It's a secret. Should I really tell them? <laughs> you should. Okay, so we got 13 gorgeous apartments uh, right above our heads here. There's actually a couple studios right above our heads. Uh, the residences of North Park Row. And uh, what are the types of apartments? So we have studios, we have a couple one bedrooms, and we have a gorgeous two bedroom that overlooks Perry Square. Are the apartments available for rent now? Right now, Flagship City Living. Oh, so you can visit flagshipcityliving.com to fill out a free application. And don't you already have some leases? I do. I already have a couple leases. I have uh, one already moving in on uh, first week of December. We got a second moving in, and hopefully a third. We're getting close. So we're filling up. Act quick. Go to flagshipcityliving.com. Excellent. Thank you, Ryan. We'll let Bye, you guys. get back. So we're over here with Taste and See Fruit and Veggie Bar. Uh, very healthy concept. Some incredible smoothies when crystal came in through the application process she rolled out all these beautiful delicious smoothies and we knew it'd be a good hit right here on state street you can't walk by and, and miss her mixing up all these wonderful healthy concoctions there's a lot of good eats throughout the uh, rest of the food hall so you may need a detox at some point in time and this is the place to go uh, i think she crystal has a smoothie that she said she uh, had in mind specifically for me. So we'll let uh, this customer go through and then we will go place our order. While we're waiting to go to uh, Taste and See Fruit and Veggie Bar, why don't we come in here with one of our hospitality team members. We've got uh, hospitality team members, experience team members. We focus on creating a wonderful experience for our guests and our visitors here. And why don't I turn it over to share some of those thoughts. Why don't you introduce yourself and talk about where you came from and what you're excited about here in the food hall. Well, my name is Trinika and um, I came from Erie. I live in Erie. Um, I'm excited to be a part of this team. I will be bartending and I will be serving coffee. So come see me. So you're bartending and serving coffees, yes. which suggests that the food hall is going to have some uh, long hours. Yes. Do you know those hours? So we will be open from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Well, 8 a.m., uh, I think 10, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., Monday to Wednesday, and then 11 p.m. On the weekends. On the weekends. Yes. Yep. And then Sunday, probably till about 6 or so. Six. yes. Yeah, so really we wanted this to be a community space. We wanted people to come and enjoy downtown. Our goal was to be open just about every day of the week. Yes. We'll be closed on Thanksgiving, Christmas Day, some of the other major holidays. 
but really any day of the week, any time of the day, we want you to come downtown and have a wonderful experience with some of our great local culinary town, some of our hospitality team members, meet new friends, have a wonderful experience. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and why you're usually behind the camera. So I'm, uh, I'm Graham Simbalar, I'm with uh, Jet24 Action News and I've been talking to you, John, for probably, I, I don't know, how long has it been going on? Probably three years yeah, now three since years we bought the building. Because I've only been in the news business five myself, but seeing this place go from like dusty floors, like, uh, like why would anybody put any money into this, to, to something that honestly feels like it's been here for years already and I've only been here maybe five minutes, it's, it's really impressive. Graham has definitely been with us along the way. Uh, like I said, it started when we bought the building and um, it was, didn't look like this. It was not safe. It needed a total gut job, but um, we're excited that you're here today to kind of see the finished product and look forward to, you said this is going to become your regular spot now? I hope I hoped so, yeah. And I have a lot of friends and family that they're like, why, why do I want to come visit you in Erie? And it's like, because now we're like, we have life again in Erie. Like there's more than just a waterfront. Like there's, a, there's stuff to do downtown now. <laughs> It's, a, it's definitely a cool time, and you're here with us today. We're, we hope you're with us uh, on the weekend with Small Business Saturday because we're opening up a whole bunch of new shops. And again, another reason to tell your family to come visit Erie, right? Certainly, definitely. I'll be here. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again. Hey, Crystal. So we are here at Taste and See, fruit and veggie bar, uh, creator of some delicious, incredible smoothies. I think that's what blew us away when you applied through the open application process. Why don't you give us a little bit of background, though, on you and your content? Here. Sure. So the concept was really, it, it really evolved from the fact that there were not any smoothies in the downtown area. And on that particular day, I needed a fresh smoothie. And so I realized that because of the lack of healthy food, simple food, like I'm not going to go too extreme. I'm still educating myself on a lot of the things, but simple foods, simple nutritional foods like fruits and veggies, I wanted to make sure that. I made it accessible because it wasn't accessible in the downtown Erie area. And we have way too many working professionals that need, I mean, not just the working professionals, people in general need the fresh, healthy stuff. We have uh, sometimes over 200 uh, construction men and women working on these projects down here, and I think they're looking forward to the healthy options. But uh, a lot of excitement today is day number one. How does it feel? Oh man, it's been amazing so far this morning. I've been busy, <laughs> which is a really good thing, but it's cool. It's, it, this is the very first business venture for me, very first time in food, beverage, and hospitality. And so it's cool. Like, I'm, I'm glad I jumped straight in, and uh, it's been a bit busy morning, and um, I've had a lot of great feedback, so I'm super excited. Not the first venture for Miss Margie, though. Miss Margie's had a few different uh, adventures in the culinary world. How does this one compare? This is totally different, but I'm psyched for it. <laughs> so I came by this morning looking for a smoothie and you said you had one specifically in mind. Yes, so for you, John, because you're so optimistic, and, and I thought about you as I was naming this, it's an orange carrot smoothie. It's called the Optimistic Orange. Our orange, our, not our oranges, but our carrot in a smoothie is from a local farmer out in Northeast. We use his microgreen carrot. Tastes just like carrot, but it's a microgreen. So it surprises people, and I think we've had uh, at least three to four of those already this morning. Already this morning, we're only an hour or two into it. Wow. Yeah, and so, it, it, optimistic, even in talking about, like when I say the name, the optimistic orange, it just kind of creates conversation. And we, we're we all in a place of just remaining optimistic, so. Absolutely, that is, that like embodies the new spirit in downtown. Just optimism about the food hall, about the, the market that is here to come, about our other great vendors. And I think that's a great way to start off the day and start off the video. So can I order up a, I'm gonna pull out my, my credit card here. Don't get my credit card numbers on, <laughs> on camera. So here comes the optimism. Mm, that tastes like optimism. Like Feeling better already. <laughs> The crew from Perry's Tavern are, are dancing. My name's Elliot Smith. I probably don't need to talk on the microphone <laughs> like that. This is Bianca, my wife, Hello. and Tony, my father-in-law. We're working on making Where? the best pizza possible. So this is, this is really what I love about this. This is really a family affair. And um, it's more, by being a family here together, it, I feel, brings a greater passion 
to the food and it that makes a difference it's not you're not mailing it in here it's not a job you're not just showing up and clocking in and clocking out this is really a family affair isn't that right that's right the only way it could be better is if our dog was here too <laughs> then we'd, we'd have everybody you know, I, I don't know if we ever, here's Corey Cook, our Director of Operations and Logistics. Corey, did we ever determine whether the food hall is dog friendly? We didn't determine that as of now. I would say uh, probably not. <laughs> Day one, uh, what are the feelings today? Just anxious, ready, uh, ready to get going. Uh, good to see customers here. We had our first couple sales, always good. Um, everybody seems to be smiling and enjoying themselves. We got kids over here. Hanging out, ice cream, <laughs> it's always good. <laughs> I mean, anytime kids are having ice cream and having a good time, I'm having a good time. That's a good, that's a good life motto. That's yeah, good. I like that. All right, well, we'll see you throughout the day. Sure. Yeah, it's lunchtime now, but uh, we'll be here pretty much all day. And you want to uh, tell the folks about the hours here? Hours of operation, so each vendor is a little bit different. Um, some are lunch, so some open at 10, some open at 11. Um, we have two breakfast places, so um, Blue Willow Cafe, they open at 8, 8 a.m. So does Taste and See, they open at 8 a.m. Soon Taste of Love will open at 8 a.m. And then the majority of the vendors will be open by 11 uh, a.m. for lunch. Community's dining room. You're the man who coined that phrase, isn't that right? <laughs> That's right. Very appropriate, very appropriate. We're looking forward to just having the whole community down here. There's something for everyone. Well, we wouldn't be here without Corey. Corey's uh, the man on the scene here has uh, helped us push this project over the finish line and it's gonna make sure that we, all the guests down here have a warm, welcoming, uh, exciting experience. Sure. Awesome, we'll see you throughout the day. Yep. Thanks, Corey. Thanks. All right, so I got cut away from Perry's Tavern here, but show us, you wanna show us what you're making there? Sure, we got pepperoni rolls and apple cheddar rolls. About to go in the oven. Cook up nice and greasy and delicious the way a, a pepperoni ball should be. So this is, a, I think, a, a great eerie success story. You were born and raised here and then moved down south, spent some time in some award-winning restaurants, and now you're back home. How does that feel to be able to have that experience away and then come back home? Um, it's nice. I mean, it's not anything I ever thought we would do. Um, and it, it was nice how we were just sort of offered this opportunity. It was impossible to say no. Um, but yeah, I'm excited uh, for the first time maybe ever to stay in Erie for a while. <laughs> we're, we're hearing that more and more. It's been a long time coming. This is obviously a, a key part of the uh, revitalization of downtown. So how does it feel with opening day? and we've been open for a few hours now. Yeah, I mean, it's great. I think uh, we've got a lot of good food to make. I'm excited to see what the first order is. If someone comes and they're asking you for your recommendation, what is the one thing you're gonna point everyone to? Uh, I'm really excited about our Hawaiian. I think we've done a little bit of a different twist on it, and I'm not a Hawaiian pizza fan. Um, so That's like a line in the sand, like people who are Hawaiian pizza fans and people who aren't. Yeah. So but I, you're gonna I've made a Hawaiian for people who don't like Hawaiian. Oh wow! So, so I think it's worth a shot. So this is this is truly the community's dining room that we've abolished the barriers between <laughs> people who love Hawaiian pizza and people who don't. That is quite remarkable. Thank you. <laughs> people have been trying that for years to do that, but now we've accomplished that on in on day one. Sure. Yeah, I'm mean, I'm really proud of that one. And uh, mentioned this is really a family affair. How does it feel to be uh, working here with your husband and your father? Um, it's really great. I mean, I've always cooked with my dad. I've always cooked with my husband. Maybe those two are the two you want to ask about. <laughs> All right, well, we'll let you get back to it. We're going to go visit some of the other vendors. Thank you for being with us today, and we'll be back to sample the goods. Yeah, Any parting here. comments? Come on down and see us. We're, uh, we're all excited to be here and we're excited to welcome new people and show you around. It's awesome. This is someone else who's been along this journey with us. You've been through this building before it looked like this, isn't that right? Oh yeah, absolutely. What an incredible transformation. I, I, I can't believe it. When, when you first walked into this building with us, uh, what did you think? Like back when? What are they gonna do? You gotta gut this entire thing. And you guys did, and it's amazing. Yeah. It, um, 
was a complete gut job. There were times where I wasn't sure if we were going to make it through, but we're here today, and um, today's day one. Is there any vendor in particular that you're especially excited about? Um, I want to see the what's what's going on with Penn State right over here, man. The ice cream shop, man. It looks so good. Uh, if I can recommend, go with the Mighty Fine Donut Sandwich. Ice oh, cream awesome. in the middle of a hot donut doesn't get any better than oh, you that. You can't beat that. <laughs> oh, man, for sure. The first thing I ordered. <laughs> it may not be the most nutritious lunch, but my son was in here last week, went straight away. So he turned out, he's still living today. So it'll be, you'll be okay too. <laughs> Mighty fine sandwich. Got it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for being here today. We'll see ya. Katie's getting Christmas decorations on. I don't know if we can interrupt Katie in her wrapping of her vendor stall to talk about day one. <laughs> that was the most serious face. So I'll give the camera background. You were one of the first sort of restaurateurs, operators who I contacted when we were talking about this concept because I thought Lucky Lou's would be a great fit um, and wanted to get your take on it. When you came through the building pretty much after Park Place and Sherlock's had been gutted, uh, what did you think? Um, I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I was just like, what the hell are they gonna do with this dumpy old place? I have no idea what a food hall is. What is this John guy talking about? I'll think about it. <laughs> and then, okay. <laughs> I think that was actually verbatim because I got an email from you saying, I just came back from, oh, yeah, was from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. I was yeah. like, oh, is this what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly that. And yes. I said, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I'm in. <laughs> and then, um, it still took us some time to transform this building. At what point did you realize it was real? Uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I didn't I didn't believe it. They were like, you guys were like, "Oh yeah, November 22nd." And I was like, "January 22nd." <laughs> so, I'm impressed. We made it on time. Um, j today, Monday, January, and November 22nd. How does it feel? Um, stressful. Um, I'm feeling a little gurgly. Um, I'm seeing spots as well. Uh, but it's it's cool. We're ready. We have a lot of cool stuff to feed people with. So. And tell us about that, because it's not, if someone knows your current location, it's not a, a mirrored uh, replica of that menu, isn't that right? Right, so we decided for a really long time I've wanted to do burgers, and we just don't have the facilities up at the other place to do it, so we took our best-selling hot dogs, five or six of them, I don't remember, and threw some burgers in there, and threw some fries in there, and hopefully, like, Hopefully people are into it as much as we are. I think they're gonna be in, in, into it. I can attest from personal experience, the burgers are delicious, the fries are delicious. Uh, I've invested in a lot of sweatpants because of all the burgers and fries I anticipate eating in the upcoming year, but um, I don't think anyone will leave here disappointed. Anything else you wanna say about day one? <sighs> I'm already ready for a nap. <laughs> What about the crew back there? Folks are hiding out. <laughs> Literally hiding. Yeah. Literally hiding. Excited for day one? Yeah. The day is arrived. Very excited. Very excited. <laughs> well, we got, I think, well, thank you, everybody. We'll be back. We got customer number one right here, Lisa Adams from Erie News Now. Oh Let you, know. you caught me eating on the job. <laughs> I'm eating on the job, but in order to report on this accurately, I have to really know how good the food is, so. That is a true uh, reporter, someone who doesn't just talk about it, but actually experiences it, isn't that correct? Reporter involvement, we call it, yes, absolutely. Um, and this is delicious from Blue Bil Willow Bakery. Um, but it, it really is neat after reporting on this. I mean, I was in here when this building was in a state uh, a number of times, walking through with you, very cold, very dirty, and really a lot of work to do. So um, to see something we've talked about in the news for a long time come to uh, fruition is really exciting. Well, thank you for being here today on opening day, and thank you for being along this journey because it has been a journey and was important, I think, uh, to share that story with the community so they knew what we were dealing with when we bought this and they don't lose uh, uh, sight of how much it's transformed. 
You know, you can see the artist's drawings of what it's going to look like, but it is so different to, to see it in reality and then to see kind of the different vision that all of the, the food vendors have for, for their little part of the property. So, um, you know, we look forward to seeing what else you guys have in store, but this is certainly a really exciting first step. There's more coming, as, as uh, Lisa knows. Lisa was uh, in Pittsburgh this summer climbing uh, rock climbing walls and boulders with Ascend. They're going to put in a new gym across the street. I think she's been with us as uh, we reported on the opening of the, of the market and the addition of Gordon's and Erie Food Co-op. So Lisa knows uh, what is going on. She maybe even have some other secrets that she's holding uh, for the time being. But we should let her get back to eating and... Uh, <laughs> she needs to get back to work. My name is Liam. How old are you, Liam? Eight. What's your favorite sport? I mean, team? nine. No, you're nine now. Um, I f like what sport? Any sport. Um, it's NBA basketball. It's the Lakers. The Lakers, nice. And football. NFL football, the Steelers, and college football, Wisconsin. Ah, uh, no Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame's up there, but. Okay, that's good. They're out there. Yeah. Do you have a favorite vendor you're excited about here at the food hall? It's Taste of Love. Taste of Love. Okay, well, we'll go over there next. But... They have awesome, awesome chicken. Awesome, awesome chicken. Yeah, that's a pretty apt description. It's The chicken is uh, pretty phenomenal. But we're standing right here in front of Straw Hat Ice Cream Shop. Do you, have you sampled all the ice cream? No, I, I haven't sampled all of them, but my favorite is Death by Chocolate. Death by Chocolate. Why hasn't your mom let you sample all the ice cream? That's a question for her. <laughs> so here, we'll, let's go over and we'll talk okay. to Straw Hat about what's going on here. Hello there, day one. How's it going? Good, we made it to day one. What do you think? We're super excited. <clears throat> and um, you, you've got a, a great following because of, uh, as we see behind you, you serve Penn State's Berkey Creamery ice cream is what you have here, isn't that right? That's right, and uh, it's, it's crazy the following that we do get. Uh, they travel from far away to come get some Penn State ice cream. Uh, those uh, graduates and kids that go to Penn State, it, they've came as far as Meadville and Conneaut Lake all the way to Northeast that I've seen just to get the, the Berkeys. Wow. But you don't have to be a Penn State alum to enjoy the ice cream, do you? You certainly do not. <laughs> and what I what I think I'm uh, was excited about when I'm talking with Jeff about this concept, uh, Jeff Seaver, the owner of Straw Hat, he mentioned that he had some other plans, some new ideas, some new concepts to bring to downtown. Do you want to tell the audience? I really want to reveal his secrets. I'll, I'll let him get into a little bit of that. Um, we do have the Dead Rooster uh, grape juice. It's made in Northeast. Every, everything's local, tagged, bottled, everything. Um, come, come try it out. Uh, we're even throwing them into uh, milkshakes. And uh, come try it out. It's delicious. I think so there's another creation that's uh, hanging on the poster on the wall over there that uh, the audience is particularly excited about. Yes, it's our... Uh, Mighty Fine Donuts, we go pick them up. Uh, you uh, pick the ice cream, we split it, we put it in the middle, we, we, we press it, and when you get it, it's hot. So uh, come on down and try it. It's, it's great. It's breakfast. <laughs> a hot cinnamon glaze, melted glaze donut with a scoop of cold, tasty Penn State Berkey Creamery ice cream in the middle. Does it get any better than that? Natasha Paisley with Taste of Love is over here in the, in the corner. She's busy prepping, so I don't want to interrupt her. But, uh, okay, all right, I am going to interrupt her. Uh, Natasha, how's it going today? It is going, it's going amazing. Listen, I woke up this morning with block in my inbox. Um, can I place my order now? I'm just like, no, just come on down to the food hall. Trust me, you want to be here. This is the place to be. <laughs> so when uh, Natasha applied, she came in with a, a platter and we thought okay that looks delicious and then she came in with another platter and I was like okay she means business she came in with two more platters and I knew she was gonna be a great fit for down here we're so excited to have her um, I think you have a a fan uh, following throughout the community yes. and we're excited to welcome them downtown um, if people are coming to your uh, stall for the first time what's the one thing that you would recommend I would recommend the seafood platters. 
seafood What's in a seafood platter? Because you get to choose any flavor you would like. So it consists of corn, crab, shrimp, lobster, crawfish, clams, oysters, all the above, all that goodness. Drenched in juicy, succulent butter. <laughs> all the, all. <laughs> All that goodness is the most apt description, and uh, we might have to put that on a t-shirt and start selling it. <laughs> I'm actually um, almost done with my sauces, so I'll be selling my sauces here as well. Ah, awesome. So uh, I want to get ready to market that soon, and they'll be able to come in and either get um, garlic butter, Cajun butter, garlic parm, any type of sauce they want, and those will be um, $15 per bottle. Awesome. So. Awesome. Yeah. So the idea behind the food hall was really to create a community dining room, um, cluster some of the, the region's best culinary talent on, under one roof, create communal seating so we can draw people downtown. But it was also to showcase, really to showcase some of this talent and to give them an opportunity to come up with new ideas and concepts. And so it's awesome that you'll be able to, uh, that you'll be bottling your sauces and selling them. So uh, the holidays are coming up. Don't go to Amazon, don't go to Target. Yes. Come downtown, flagship city food hall, yes. taste of love, sauces, it's, uh, make great stocking stuffers, gr gift for colleagues, mm -hmm. don't need to go anywhere else. Now everybody does a traditional turkey on, on Christmas anymore, so everyone's into the seafood. It's like, it's like a big thing right now, so it's a trend actually. So the seafood sauce is gonna come in handy. Come get some, come on. <laughs> Butter deliciousness. <laughs> Butter. <laughs> What about yourself? You're hiding out back there. Any thoughts about day one? <laughs> I'm proud of my daughter. I'm happy that she's doing that. I'm so proud of her. And she's going to make it by the grace of God. And she's going she to do good for herself. That's all I got to say. <laughs> That's awesome. We're, uh, we're really proud. She came in. She really... Uh, blew us away during the application process and she's not only talented but some folks are talented but they don't have that passion they don't have that love for what they're doing when she got her when she got her pageant that is from our dad and she got mostly from her dad but she got just a little bit from me but she got most of all of it from her dad because her dad can get down and cooking burning and everything like so cool <laughs> yes hey so I say she got it from her dad, and I'm really, really proud of her. And I know that her father is really, really happy that she is doing that a good job for herself. That's awesome. Well, you can take some credit for your daughter. My mom takes credit for all the good stuff that I do, which is rare and blames all the, the stuff I do wrong on my dad. But, but that's the way it works. So don't forget, Taste of Love sauces, perfect for Christmas time, the holidays, make great gifts. And we'll see you uh, later today. Sam is running around, but Sam, what's going on? <laughs> How's today going? We're very well. We, we are very excited. Today is, is the day. So hope to see everybody here. Uh, uh, it's going to be an amazing day. We're ready for it. Awesome. You've got the meat spinning. You want to tell us what you've got what, what you've got going on back there? We have the uh, beef shawarma, chicken shawarma and we have falafel and full menu too with appetizers. Awesome. And you've got a, a chef who's relatively new, came yeah. recently? Yes. He, he, he been in the, in the state now almost like two months and he's, uh, he has really large experience with the Mediterranean food and he's very excited to be here working with us. Every time I see him, he's got a big smile on his face. Where did he come from? Tell us about his background. Uh, he's uh, Syrian and uh, he came from Egypt. He used to live, like he fled Syria with his family. He stayed in Egypt for four, four years. And uh, he came here like with the uh, resettlement program. He's been here now almost two months. Yeah. And um, obviously, so you've got two options right there spinning around. If someone comes, what do you recommend? What are you going with? Both. <laughs> Great answer. Great answer. I, I love both, honestly. I mean, that each one it has uh, like really uh, something uh, like different, but both of them really it's good choice. So I, I recommend both of them. I cannot say chicken or beef. So please try it, and you you let me know which one you like.
There you go. When you come down here, order both. Don't don't skip out on either one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Forward to to see everyone here. Well, before we let you go, when we were in your um, when we were in your store and you were uh, prepping and we did the initial video, I asked uh, I asked you a question. Do you remember the question? Uh, which one? Do they call you Mr. Shwarma? Yes, I do. <laughs> now, I mean, you can, I can approve, I mean, that we are the Mr. Shawarma here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. We're really excited. Do you have a few minutes to chat here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, day one, how does it feel? Exciting and nervous. <laughs> what do you think uh, people are uh, looking forward to the most? Something different. If someone comes today and they ask your uh, opinion on what they should order, what are you going to tell them? Well, if you don't care for spicy food, royal chapter is the one to go. But if you okay with the spicy, tingy tangy, and uh, Thai basil is okay. And also we have a great K KFC bun, which is Korean fried chicken. It was the number one hit on soft opening, actually. So. The Korean fried chicken was uh, delicious. That was delicious. I'm looking... I'm looking forward to having about 40 of those today. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be back in touch. Thank you for being here. Joe and I go back. Joe and I. Don't give me an in. Life mentor, uh, guide, life guide, compadre. Yeah, you just uh, pulling something out that's left me speechless here. Look at some of these, some of these uh, treats that he's got. That, can you tell us what that was? Whatever is the cup. And what's inside of it? Prosciutto, omelet, cottage cheese, parmesan cheese, red pepper, spinach. So that, this is like an example of your go-to. You've got these, these um, dishes that just kind of um, exhilarate the taste buds, excite the imagination. We haven't been seen around in a while. So I would say it's almost uh, retro. So when you come downtown and you, you walk in right off of North Park Row, you're going to hit Blue Willow Bakery and Cafe. It's the first vendor you saw. And this is something that you can expect. You can expect something that is fresh, that is delicious, that you may have not seen before, but that is going to uh, overwhelm your senses. And we've got some great seats here. So you can, uh, you too can be mentored by Chef Joe if you take a seat every day and, uh, and enjoy all that he has to offer. So we're excited that you're a part of this. And I don't know if you have any uh, words about day one. You've, oh, op <laughs> You've opened restaurants on two continents, three. three continents, and in a number of cities. How does this compare? Uh, actually, this has been smoother in a lot of ways, but uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's an adventure shall we say, uh, but it's been very interesting. And I like watching the other young people, young entrepreneurs, you know, some of their reactions and what they're doing. It's been interesting. We've got a great mix of some um, experience, some veterans, some uh, first timers, some up and comers, really a great diverse mix here at the food hall. And we're excited that you're a part of it. I do like the mix. So if someone comes uh, in the weeks, over the next few weeks, and they ask you for a uh, recommendation on what they should get, what are you going to say? That's so hard because, frankly, I don't like sweets. I can bake really well, but as far as, like, if I was to say something, it would probably be a fruit dessert. I like our raspberry bars. I like the beignets. You know. Get a shot of those beignets. Brian, anything you want to add here? No, not really. I'm excited to be here. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Did you think day one was going to come? Uh, I've been excited for it, and now that I'm here, I'm ready for it. So. Dina's is an authentic Dominican restaurant. Uh, husband and wife couple. The wife is from, how you doing? The wife is from the Dominican Republic. She's brought a lot of her family um, to help out. The, it's uh, some very classic, very traditional Dominican recipes and, and menu items. Yeah, I tell everyone, if you like Chipotle, then you are going to love Dina's.
um, all fresh, all healthy, all tasty. Uh, there is, uh, you are, you will definitely not be disappointed. And going over there is an experience unto itself because uh, they've got some Spanish music going. They're um, they themselves are excited, and it's uh, y again, you won't be disappointed.